Hey y'all, Zelda here. I am here with a week ahead tarot reading. I'm gonna give you three different options of three different dragon skulls. Um, and you're gonna pick the one that resonates most with you. By that, I mean the one that either you feel some affection or affinity towards or feel drawn to in any way. I encourage you to just trust yourself in this. Um, and if you're new to trusting yourself in that way, this can be a great no risk opportunity to just kind of take the plunge and pick the one that that calls first. And if you watch repeated videos, you can kind of see if your predictions or your um, sensations are accurate for you. Um, so I'm going to show you those three different dragon skulls. You're going to pick the one that calls to you most, and then you're going to go to the timestamps in the description for this video below. Um, and you'll skip ahead to the one that you feel most drawn to. So the three different decks, um, each pile is going to be three card reading, one card from each of three decks. So the first deck is this um, deck that I'm really excited about. I just got it this week. Um, I backed it on Kickstarter. It's called the Mythical Cats Oracle deck. So it has all of these cool Oracle um, cats and phrases. So I can't wait to see um, how that fits into the reading. Um, the Universal Dragons Oracle deck, which I use regularly in these. And then the Mary L. Tarot deck, which I have never used in one of these pick a card piles, but is actually one of my oldest tarot decks. So I am excited. Those are the decks that came forward. Um, let's show you the different dragon options. So pile number one, this is Arietti. Arietti is a citrine dragon master carved by Vanderlei Burrito, Brazilian master carver. So this is Arietti. So if Arietti speaks to you, that is pile number one. Pile number two is Jaya. Jaya is an ametrine, so amethyst and citrine dragon, master carved by Leandro de Souza, who is another Brazilian master carver. So that is Jaya, and Jaya is pile number two. Pile number three is this Amazonite dragon. This one is also carved by Vanderlei, and her name is Freya. So if Freya is speaking to you, that is pile number three. So now that you have your pile, um, I'm going to spend a moment tuning in, calling in our guides. Um, if you would like to stay for that and ground and center, feel free to do so. If not, you can skip ahead to your pile and I will see you there. So I'm going to use some of the Golden Sphinx Spray. This one is connected to Sphinx Energy which is Shapeshifter, Akashic Records, Connected. <sighs> I call upon my own guides, ancestors, teams, and lineages to be here with me now as I offer this reading so that I may be a clear channel and provide messages to each and every person who is watching this video. I also call upon the guides and ancestors, teams and lineages of each and every person watching this video, whenever in time they may encounter it, to support them in receiving the messages that are meant for them and in leaving the rest utilizing their own sacred power of discernment to know which is which. Okay. Well, let's get started with pile number one. Pile number one, you chose Arietti. Arietti, um, 
chose this name and shared with me how her name was connected to a movie, The Secret World of Arietti, which is a movie I actually hadn't seen before that name came to me for her. Um, this happens sometimes with guys is it seems like they pick a name on purpose and they want me to go look into something. And it felt very much like there was a message of building trust with the unseen and with spirit that she is very connected to, like this um, like walking in between two worlds. So let's see what message she has for you all. Okay. So the tarot card is the eight of discs. A lot of imagery in this. And so in the Mary L Tarot, the Eight of Discs is the Eight of Pentacles. So the discs are the pentacles. The Universal Dragon deck, um, the Oracle card is Conviction. And the Mythic Cats is Diahemus, Diahemus. The vampire it says, beware of beings, events, or projects that are taking too much from you. So the message that I'm receiving from this feels very connected to self-trust the eight of pentacles i often see as this working on your work in a way that also is working on you like putting in effort and being transformed and how we are in relationship very actively and lovingly with our our body with our projects with our earthly our connection to earthly resources in the context of this especially with these this Marielle Tarot, I, I've been meaning for ages to do reviews of tarot decks. And while I love, 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 love the imagery on this, it's so, so beautiful. Her art is so amazing. I do not think that it is easy for beginning tarot readers to interpret. I found it really difficult when I first got it. It doesn't have a lot of the typical cues and imagery that Smith Rider Waite decks um, or decks that are based on the Smith Rider weight oftentimes have in common. Um, so oftentimes there is the imagery of like someone kind of like working on a pentacle and these other pentacles. And so it feels very much like um, that feels a little absent from this. However, there is this kind of transformational quality with this like lamb in the middle. Um, and it feels like I don't know, like competing forces. I also just read something that talked about how the God's light colors are red and gold. And so it's just feeling very like a relationship to like divine work, like whatever you feel, um, if you're not super spiritual or not super, um, you know, connected to uh, spirit as a, an entity, almost like a creator entity. It doesn't have to be a monotheistic entity. It's more just like, um, like an intelligent force that, um, wor that works in the world. If you don't feel connected to that, I also think you could conceptualize this as parts of oneself, um, that there are these kind of like not competing, but like tensely relational forces, um, and with the lamb, it feels like almost this um, pure or like like a childlike heart or um, like a clean slate even is something that's coming to mind. And that because it's in relationship with these tensions and this message around vampires, it feels like there's an opportunity almost for you to be um, doing work that really fulfills you, but that also maybe you're in a place where you have a lot of doors that are open to you and you could go through almost any of them. And that actually being able to have so many opportunities can create a bit of like um, 
a fear of missing out type of thing and doing like overextending oneself. And so sometimes the the challenge, like the boundary that needs holding is actually within ourself is actually like coming, like I almost see like a coming back to this like lamb or inner child or inner, like a way that you connect with your own internal sense of like brilliance or um, inner compass and being able to find conviction or find um, like to recalibrate your compass in that way, to be able to be discerning about what messages, about what um, events, what relationships, what projects are actually like draining rather than nourishing. And this feels in addition to the, like the eight of discs, I'm actually seeing this like six of pentacles energy that has like come up a couple times this week, actually, in my experience, which is being in this very um, active and caring relationship where resources, like you're aware of how your resources are doing. Um, the eight of discs feels like, um, more in the process than the six does in just in how I work with them. And so for this, it feels like there's some invitation to like, almost be, you know, if you turn the eight on its side and it's like an infinity sign, right? That there's almost like you're approaching that like transformational tipping point where you could like commit to something new or you could restructure your schedule or you could do something like that. Um, maybe it's like completing something and figuring out if you want to like renew that. Um, or maybe you're at a natural pause in a relationship and you're deciding whether or not to move forward. Um, I really get the sense that like because the pentacles are here and because there's this quality of like um, being really integritous for yourself with your resources, I really encourage you to tune in with your body and see like what are your somatic, your embodied yeses and nos. How is your body a pendulum? Um, if you've never used a pendulum, I encourage you to look into that practice. This is something that I do personally is using my body as a pendulum and that I have um, done in like a workshop setting before. It's far too much to teach in like the next <laughs> two minutes um, of this reading, but it's just essentially like you could also use a pendulum, but finding and navigating your body cues of like what an embodied yes and what an embodied no looks like. And actually using that as a way to feel some sense of conviction that you actually know what is best for you. Let's tune in a little with Arietti. Those feel like a lot of the messages that she's guiding. Arietti is showing me how, um, Building a connection with the body, with spirit, with guides um, involves paying attention to things that are quiet, things that are sometimes you need to like wait um, to be receptive to those things. And it's not something that can deliver like an immediate answer. Like it's not like ringing up someone and being like, okay, yes or no, do you want do you want X? And then like, if they say yes, you go get it. And if they say no, you don't, right? Like it's not so binary or so straightforward or even so um, immediate uh, in the response. It can oftentimes be more nuanced. It can have more, more patience, more quiet. And so Ariadne, I'm really hearing like leave space or leave, um, like some of the space that you might create is not to be filled, but is actually for spirit. And so how can you leave space or for your body, right? Is for your, your connection to um, inhabiting your earthly form. So as you're saying yes to obligations, have you buffered in time for making sure your body needs are you're going to get met, for making sure that you will have enough rest, for making sure that you actually feel nourished in that? If you're going to do something that's overextending, are you checking in and making sure that you have extra rest on either end for transitions, things like that? hear my dog snoring in the background. Um, pets can be amazing ways to also have this. Like pets, especially like dogs, can um, create limitations that have us check in with our needs. And this is something that 
I'm curious about like, how are, how are you at being present with your body, with your needs, with, with spirit or with your calling while also doing the things that are financially beneficial or intellectually exciting or relationally um, fantastical for you? How are you finding that balance so that you can be transformed as you are doing your transformative work in the world? The bottom line really feels like fostering and finding those places where you can feel a sense of conviction in your decision making. And Arietti feels very much like, um, like that has some sort of, like it could be also like going into nature or it could be like looking for confirmation from the unknown. Um, there's some sort of invitation to participate with the um, collective um, spiritual quality as well in this. Okay, group one, I think that is your message. Thank you so, so much. I um, miss you all. When I was out last week, it, we were celebrating my beloved's birthday week and it just did not happen in time, but I very much felt the absence. If you see this and you feel called to visit my website and sign up for my newsletter, there will be a tarot scope going up out to my newsletter subscribers, as well as a discount code for my website for everything that is listed up there right now that will be going out in the next couple days. So tomorrow when this is posted, um, um, I'm recording it like the evening before. So tomorrow when this is posted, when you're watching this, you will have, you know, a little bit of opportunity to sign up for that newsletter. Um, if you are not interested, totally fine. I hope to see you next week at the week ahead tarot reading on Sunday. Thanks y'all. Group two. You chose Jaya. Jaya is um, very firm, but very loving in the way that she shows up. She brings a lot of investigation around um, joy and love and commitment. Let's see what cards Jaya chose for us this week. So the Mary Altero card is the Ace of Wands. The dragon card is goals. And jade, the opulent. This is a sign of prosperity and wealth. Most often this means treasure or money, but it can also symbolize spiritual riches or fortune. I really love these cards. I think they're really, really beautiful. Um, I love that they have the message on them. Really easy for beginning readers. So, um, yes. <sighs> okay. This feels like an invitation to say yes, actually to a new project. This feels like maybe you're doing some goal setting or that there is maybe something inspiring. Um, for some reason, I'm feeling like a little bit of like in goal setting that there might be like some goals that are like financial goals, but also goals that are like long-term nurturing, sustainable goals. And this is what I'm talking about with this is almost like bucket list type of goals, right? Like someone who said um, when they're younger, like I've, I want to write a book when I grow up or I want to publish a tarot deck or I want to, um, create art or I want to, you know, like something inspiring. 
And that doesn't have to be something like outlandish in terms of like, it doesn't have to be like a goal, like I want to be a famous author, right? It's very different to have a goal of writing a book than it is to have a goal of being a famous author. Those are not the same thing. They might feel like the same thing, but they are very different result or outcomes desirable from that one that one tangible result. And so the Ace of Wands very much feels like like this spark from the universe, but also like a spark. And I see this like chasm almost and like this spot in the sacral area, but this like gaping, like it feels like longing when I'm looking at it, right? And when I see this goals, it's almost like this desirability or something that's like heating, like creating um, like a moss to a flame. That's like what I'm hearing. And so there does feel like this quality of like, is there something that you really, really want? Um, with this, it feels like, yes, this could be interpreted as um, do the thing because it will bring you great abundance. But I want to be very clear that like what the message I'm getting is like, opulence at in terms of like the empress in terms of the feeling of receiving his birthright and of being very like lush and jaya feels like she's indicating in some ways this um this abundance or prosperity that comes from achieving your dreams um, in a very non-capitalistic sense, right? That like setting up a structure to achieve something that you long for and taking a seed of inspiration and nurturing it and watching it blossom and grow is in itself its own form of abundance. And so there feels like an encouragement that there might be like more space or that you might be reignited in your passion or excitement for something. And that in doing that, um, in having that goal, you're going to have a, like a felt sense of opulence of like the luxury of being able to take that seed and give it space to grow. And much less so the feeling of setting your sights or your goal on something that is to generate income. There's nothing wrong with in a capitalistic world generating income. That's something that the vast majority of us have to do in this lifetime. And there's no nothing wrong with that being something. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to have that in abundance or to have an easeful relationship with that. There is just is an acknowledgement that like there is more opulence, there is more delight and joy, there is more satisfaction to be had than numbers in a bank account. There is more delight to be savored than um, fancy things, than, than ordering the things off of your wish list, right? That like accomplishing those goals is also a form of having what you long for. Um, I have this image of from the seed, like you are in a seed place. And sometimes when we have this goal, we can do a practice of visualizing almost or spending time really feeling what it would be like if that goal already happened. I see Jaya having a, like, it feels like, okay, I'm going to try my best to explain the image that is coming through to me. And hopefully that will make sense for you almost like those canopies that hang over a bed or a pillow or something where they have that ring and then like all of that flowing fabric. And I'm seeing like this image of someone kind of like this, reaching up and pulling down from their goal, like all of this like golden light and like other colors of light to kind of like shine down around them, almost like creating an egg or a, like a nest of this delightful, radiant, um, luxurious energy that that goal or that inspiration is like shining onto you. And in that there feels like an invitation to like, let the kind of light or the image, because that does feel similar in both of these, right? 
let that kind of influence or inform the way that you're reaching for it, right? In terms of like bringing down that, the happening, the process of that goal into the experience of, of the creation that like the creation of a creative idea is the joy, not the finished project. Um, the finished product or project can be beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just an encouragement in this moment for there to be more than that, um, in this process for you. All in all, this feels really exciting and enthusiastic. It feels like an amazing time to do visualizations of, um, I'm hearing the, um, the mantra or the affirmation, um, the things I am longing for, long for me too. How can you have a sense that the things that you feel magnetized towards are also magnetized to you and that you are pulled to each other in a very, in a beautiful dance? Jaya feels very much in like delighting in, in good work and encouraging you to feel that sense of inspiration in your day to day and find a way to like imbue your goals with that. Um, this also feels very much like a non-cognitive dominant like goal setting process. So that may be also something to see if you resonate with. Thank you so much group two. I think that is your message for today. I really, really appreciate you watching. I love getting to see people's experiences. Um, if you would like to sign up for my newsletter, it's a free newsletter. Um, at the beginning of each Zodiac season, I send out a tarot scope, so a card pulled for each different um, sign. And you will get that by email for free if you sign up for my newsletter. And that will be going out in the next couple of days for Scorpio season. So if you'd like to sign up, now is the time to do so for that. If not, no worries. I will see you next week um, for the week ahead. Up next, we have group three. You chose Freya. Even on this little webcam, she has the most beautiful flashes shiny cheeks. Freya has a lot of shapeshifter wisdom. So let's see what messages Freya has for group three this week. Okay. So the tarot card from the Marielle tarot is the two of discs. Dragon card is listen to self. And from the cat deck, the mythic cats, Mudgeon the Krabby. Mudgeon says someone is seriously cranky right now. This may be a result of ignoring or hiding from things rather than facing them. Okay. First of all, um, I want to just share a little bit of like the humor for me in this. Um, Freya and I have been working together for a little while and she very much wanted to stay and work with me, even though she was in a different carving that, um, and I might explain more of that in a later video. If you are like, how does that work? <laughs> I could talk about that some other time when we have the time for it. But she actually ended up creating a little bit of a, like a breaking situation so that she would stay. And when we worked together, I was feeling the ways in which I create the hardest possible way for myself to get to where I'm going, even though I know that's what is necessary sometimes. And so I just feel like she sometimes has some of this like 
if it's not going to happen the easy way, the hard way is just fine. Um, and so <laughs> it's not surprising to me that she would pick up some of that energy. If you are feeling cranky, if you got this card and you were like, yes, I am, that is me. I am this. I am the mudgeon. Um, great. There's nothing wrong with being cranky. We get to have a full access, a full expansive access to our emotions as a human being and anger, frustration, crankiness. Um, all of those are very valid experiences. Anger is a wise emotion. I believe all of our emotions are here to communicate with us. And anger is an emotion that, um, communicates our boundaries to us. It communicates either that we are getting something that we do not want or need, or we are not getting something that we do want and need. So anger is communicating these things. And so if you are feeling cranky or frustrated, then there is a high likelihood that you are either getting something you do not want, or you are not getting something that you do want or need. And that is a reason that we feel frustration. It's an indicator to us. Um, we also can um, like indulge in these states. We can indulge in a sense of crankiness. Um, we can indulge in a sense of frustration or anger. We can complain. And this is feeling a little bit like, um, is this feeling imbalance for you? Like, are you feeling like um, the way that you're getting to express your anger has traction or is effective? A lot of people in our society don't feel like they have a lot of space to experience frustration, crankiness, just like generally not feeling good about what's going on. Um, but it is important to be able to like listen to these parts of self Um I almost see this way. So this feels very connected to the two of pentacles energy. Um, but the two of pentacles, I love this imagery on here of the coins on the eyes. Um, this feels like it is symbolic in some ways of like this passage or threshold. I know in certain cultures, they put coins on the eyes of the dead as a way to kind of pay the ferryman to the dead. Um, I think that that is in some Egyptian um, systems of belief, but also there feels like this quality of like heads and tails even. So like multiple sides of um, one coin. And that to me speaks to different parts of self. The two of discs feels like this invitation to orient yourself. The twos feel like this false binary almost. I see the twos oftentimes as this binary separation that is an invitation to be not just an either or, but actually a both and. Um, and so with this, it feels like how do we invite back in to ourself and braid back into ourself a part of our experience? How do we welcome the experience of crankiness, of anger, and listen to that and give it a little bit of weight and grounding in the fact that we are listening, that we are being present with ourselves in this way? Um, I even see these little like horns kind of, which, they could also just be curls, right? But I'm seeing them almost as like the little ram horns. And when I see um, like a crab that feels like pre-Scorpio season and the ram feels very like Aries kind of Mars, it's like there is an invitation to feel like, is there a reactive part of self that like is like I am and I want to be heard in what I am and what I am experiencing. That's a very Aries kind of like I am is like the cry of a newborn infant as Lindsay Mack calls it in their work. It is the um, kind of like making space for oneself. And that I feel that sense of if this part is coming up and wants to be expressed, how can you actually hear it? Sometimes when we are, oh, okay, I'm getting a little more of a, so Freya is saying, part of being fluid or fluent as a shapeshifter is being able to retain the outline, the outline, I'm gonna use that as a stand-in word until I'm given a better one. The outline of oneself in whatever form 
your body takes. To be able to retain the outline or the silhouette of your spirit in whatever container it may be contained. And that this is a way in shape-shifting to not lose oneself. Freya, does that integrate into... No, okay. It was just more important than what I was sharing. So we can drop the other thread. If that felt important for you, you can hold on to that and see what comes to you. But this feels like one of her messages is... Um, in coming into relationship with the parts of you that perhaps you are, that are feeling overwhelming to your experience or that you're feeling the desire to avoid or push away. And that like being able to shape shift and experience that full spectrum of your, the way that you show up, the, the, the bigness that is you, the expansiveness that is you and being able to have the fullness of that experience, part of that is in feeling the um, the imperviousness of your spirit to to being damaged by that, I guess, right? That like, this actually feels a little bit like um, releasing maybe fear or stories. So this is feeling interesting in the sense that Freya is kind of showing me these images and that like expressing one's anger fully can be really scary if you have had someone in your life who expresses anger in a really scary way or if you had been told that you weren't allowed, or if you were told something like um, a story, like a societal narrative, like good people don't get angry or spiritual people don't get angry. Um, that's not true. Um, anger is not a danger. Ang anger and any emotion can be dangerous if wielded in a violent way. However, your anger is not, your anger is here to support you and to tell you what that you have a sense of worth and that you are deserving of good things and of things that are easeful and not a pain in the butt your anger wants better for you and feels like you deserve it and so there is this aspect of being able to hold your anger is also being able to hold your sense of boundary and of self and that being able to welcome this and listen to yourself and em embody this part of yourself, not as the entirety of you, not as the shape of your spirit, but as the shape of you right now. And that that is a part of your spiritual self or your soul or your self with a capital S if you prefer. Anything else, Freya? Freya has a few things that she could share, but none of them are crystallizing in a way that I can convey to you. One of them seems like this image of like, visualize it like one way that we can listen to ourselves or welcome this back in is by like creating a visual um i was doing it with my hand down there but then realized you couldn't see but like a visual representation of your anger or creating a container like a, a space where you're going to move anger through your body and get to like feel what that feels like fully um and that that could be a way to actually listen to yourself like i almost see like there are all these different containers that you could listen to yourself in what one works for you what one allows you to be in that direct relationship in that direct and loving relationship okay group three i hope that resonated with you <sighs> thank you freya and thank you all. 
If you would like to receive a free tarot scope for me, from me at the beginning of each um, zodiac season, um, the next one will be coming out in a couple days for Scorpio season, please go to the link in the description and sign up for my newsletter. Um, I mostly send out just emails that are tarot scopes and once in a while, a discount code for my website or if I'm doing something new. So if you would like to receive that, that is available there. If not, I look forward to seeing you next week at the week ahead. I will be over the next couple of weeks, hopefully really starting to create some other videos. So if there are things that you would like to see from me that you have not seen since I've mostly been creating these ones, um, feel free to let me know either in the comments or by messaging me or using the contact form on my website. I am really excited to see what other people are excited for and can't wait to be in more connection with you. Hope you have a beautiful week. See you next week.